Hello everyone, welcome to SFDC Ninja. Today we are going to start Apex Trigger series. In this series, we are going to discuss one scenario every week. So without wasting any time, let's get started. In today's video, we are going to learn the basics of Apex Triggers. And by end of this video, you will understand what is an Apex Trigger, when a developer should use it. We will also cover types of trigger and difference between them. Also, when we should go for before trigger and when we should go for after trigger. At last, we will cover the best practice and syntax to write a trigger. And after that, we will also cover a basic trigger scenario. So let's start with first question. What is an Apex trigger? Let's understand by its definition. Apex trigger is nothing but a piece of code which executes whenever we perform any DML operations like insert, update, or delete on any record. It also enables a developer to perform custom actions like creating or deleting a record or updating a record or firing an error before or after record gets saved to database. Okay, now we know what a trigger is. But when should we use trigger? So we use trigger to perform operations based on specific conditions like if you want to restrict certain operations from happening on a specific condition or if you want to modify any related record which we cannot do by point and click tools. Therefore, when point and click tool fails to complete any requirement, Apex trigger comes in the picture to save you. But the thumb rule is for a given requirement, if it is possible with point and click tool, then go with it. If it is not possible, then do it with Apex trigger. Coming to next question, types of triggers. So there are two types of trigger. First is before trigger and second is after trigger. And these two are different from each other in the way that before trigger executes before the record gets saved to database. For example, we want to do any change on a record like updating a field value or any other change before that record gets saved to database. For this requirement, we have to execute our code before the record gets saved which we can do by using before trigger. Coming to after trigger, after trigger executes after the record gets saved to database. For example, we have a record and we want to create a child record on it. For that, we'll be needing ID of that parent record, which we can fetch only after record gets saved to database. And we can do this thing by using after trigger. Now, when to use before and after trigger? We use before trigger when we want to update a field of same object or to validate record values before it gets saved to database. Uh, let's take an example. While inserting a record, if a user left address field empty, then an error should get populated stating you cannot save contact with a blank address field. Here we are validating record before that get saved to database. So we have to use before trigger here. Coming to after trigger, we use after trigger to access fields like ID, created date or last modified date which are generated by system and which are generated only after record gets saved to database. For example, we have an account and a contact and contact is the child of account. Now we want to have contacts address same as account address whenever we update that account. So in that scenario, we are updating related record. So therefore, we have to go with after trigger. In short, to update or populate any field on same record or to fire an error on validating any record, we will go with before trigger and in any other condition like updating related record, we will go with after trigger. Triggers are powerful tool that can do many things when used correctly, but cause a lot of headaches when used incorrectly. There could be many problems like high possibility of recursion, slow processing due to badly written code and many more. So there are some best practice to follow while writing a trigger. First is one trigger per object. Always prefer to have one trigger per object. In case of multiple trigger, you do not have control over the execution of triggers. I mean, you do not have control over that which trigger will execute first. 
so you should always try to have one trigger on one object second is logicless trigger you should avoid writing logic in trigger logic written inside trigger cannot be exposed to other class therefore it decreases code reusability and not able to write test class properly so always try to have a trigger handler class in which you will write your trigger logic next is avoid calling batch from trigger so you should always avoid to call a batch from a trigger because when a batch is called from trigger there are high chances to hit governor li limit provided by salesforce next is avoid using dml and socal inside for loops it is always a best practice to not use dml statement or socal queries inside for loop to avoid governor limits next is avoid hard coding ids so if you are deploying your code between different environments or sandboxes it is essential to avoid hard coding any kind of value such as id or emails in code if possible you can use custom label or custom settings to store such hard coded values so next is syntax of apex triggers this is the basic syntax of a trigger here you can give any name according to your need and here the object name will come automatically on which you are creating your trigger and here we have to provide events like before insert before update and inside these brackets you will have to write your code now let's go and create our first trigger before writing code first let's understand the scenario in this scenario if a user left the phone field empty while inserting an account then an error should come stating you cannot left the phone field empty so let's create an apex trigger let's name it as trigger and we want to show error on account therefore we have to select account object okay now the important thing is so this trigger should execute before insertion of a record therefore we have to use before trigger event now it is a best practice to write context specific code so we will apply a check of trigger dot is before and trigger dot is insert i will explain context variable in upcoming videos let's apply a check and trigger dot is insert now the code inside this if condition will execute only if both trigger dot is before and trigger dot is insert returns true because we want to validate the code before it gets inserted now we have to iterate over trigger dot new so before iterating first let's apply, let's apply a null check over it basically trigger dot new returns new version of records i will create a separate video on this topic as of now just understand that trigger dot new returns list list of s object it means if your trigger is on account then it will return list of account similarly if your trigger is on contact it will return list of contacts and what does it returns in this trigger it returns the record that are being inserted similarly if i if you are using before update and before insert it will return the code that are being inserted or updated so let's iterate over this list trigger dot new now we will check if phone field is null or not and if it is null then we will show error so let's check none if phone if this condition will get true to show error in apex we have add error method here you can provide your error message you cannot insert account 
with one field empty let's save it now let's check whether a trigger is working fine or not to check our trigger let's create an account we will give Virat Kohli and we will keep phone field empty click on save see the error has come so as of now this error is coming here in in the last of this pop-up we can also show this error on any specific field let's say we want to show this error on phone field so for that you just need to add the field name here I click on save and if you click on save this error is coming here now let's provide any value okay it gets saved this is my first video guys if you have any suggestion for me then please comment i am open to your suggestions thank you